What's up, esteemed guests and subscribers? This is, of course, your dude, Lightlager here, continuing my very long list of exchange reviews. And this time we got one called Sidex or Sidex, which is a centralized South Korean exchange started back in 2018. And I probably joined this exchange back in early 2019 or likely late 2019. I can't remember exactly when I started trading here and using their platform. But in this review, I will be going through over the Sidex platforms, the fees, the coins, everything, and all the extra features that they do offer over their competition. So in Sidex, we have 74 different coins listed according to Going Gecko. Might be a bit more than that since Going Gecko and Going Market Cap don't actually uh, list every single coin that are obviously in exchanges. And there's over 190 different trading pairs. And everything happens to spot trading, which basically is the main source of trading in this website since due to the fact that they don't actually have a margin or futures trading on this platform. And when it comes to the um, main interface here, I am liking it very much. I think it's very smooth. Um, the fonts and the sizes of the prices are very clear. On the side, we see the pretty much the biggest trading pairs, which is Bitcoin, Ethereum, and USDT, which you kind of expect on most of the exchanges. There's also a favorites tab, which allows you to basically uh, mark certain pairings, which you can then find very easily and fast in case you're trading something specific on this exchange. Now, in terms of the actual order book, it also kind of gives us a give a good idea of everything that is going on. There is the classic order history, deal datings, and deal details, and grid trading, um, or sorry, grid trading, and everything is pretty good. In terms of the minimum buyout, so if I want to buy Ethereum with $10, $10, am I actually able to do that? Yes, I am. So um, there are multiple, um, you know, trading pairs obviously available here. There's also the P, I don't actually know what that stands for. Um, then there's the innovation and also ETFs. So in case you're wanting to short or long certain currencies, this is also great for that kind of easier for certain people. I think that's something I should personally look into myself later. Now, then there is the, well, the ATF that we already went through. And let's go into one of their savings programs uh, ideas, which is actually Masternode hosting. So um, this is something that I really haven't seen on any other exchange, which really offers any sort of a Masternode hosting. Now, I do want to say here, because obviously I'm free to say anything since this is not a sponsored review, um, most of these master notes here are absolute garbage, like Axe, in Mog, uh, XRD, Sins. Most of these are like dead in the water master notes, and I wouldn't bother with them. If you were to choose something, Zelle obviously is a solid project, and probably ESBC is not too bad either. And I guess Sins can be considered an okay investment in terms of its ROI, but it's not like, these are not like exactly A tier masternodes, which are their offering here, but it can be um, somewhat of a good deal if you don't wanna go through a masternode hosting service, there is gonna be a rental fee. And th that's, let's see how much if we're actually gonna be, if we're gonna be taking one node, how much is this gonna be? And you can also pay with CTT, which is the native token of the Sidex exchange. And this can be, for some people, the right way to do. Masternode hosting can go low as a dollar a month with certain services. Pecunia comes into my mind. And, but then again, if you're already holding all your tokens, I mean, coins in the exchange already, might as well use this service because it's easier to fund from your exchange account than at Centra. So this is not actually too bad of a deal when you really think about it for the long term and, you know, the kind of the ease of access here without having to hassle with anything. So it's not like that bad of a, you know, opportunity for you. But I do would like to see a lot better master notes available here. And I think they had some in the past, but no longer. Then there is a savings plans, which can be uh, chosen mostly for USDTs. 
and these are minimum of 14 day periods with $100 uh, minimum usually and these are going from around 12% even Filecoin had here a 50% interest that it was pretty uh, pretty good obviously a half a year um, you know minimum period which is not too bad um, it seems that the company is invested in Filecoin uh, mining themselves. I looked into it actually yesterday. Uh, very, very expensive endeavor. Uh, let's go into the eco incentives. So there is basically trade mining that happens on the platform that basically I believe that when people trade, uh, you will be getting um, CTTs by doing these trades on the platform. Um, there's also a staking thing, which can be basically, you know, to get more CTT. Uh, I remember there being something about burning the actual exchange token. Uh, there is some utility, some use case for this actual token, but I wouldn't put it necessarily into these high tier, um, you know, exchange tokens al alongside with Bitmax's token or Huobi's or uh, Binance, KuCoin, etc. But I think it's kind of like on the middle part on, on, the, on that side of things. Now you can also um, join Cytex mining pools, which are for certain different coins. You have Onion here. Nervos is a pretty good coin in my opinion. Uh, you have Veil, IOTX, and these can be basically, you can participate on them. And I think you have to like pay a certain amount of uh, cost uh, locked into that. I think this is USD. And then you will basically get some of these um, mining rewards. And then there's the annual ROI for that. Um, uh, payment so um, kind of interesting model I have to say but some people want to like access mining and I, I, I too want to kind of do that but it's so like expensive and electricity can be a bit of a hassle and you don't really like the sound of these devices and everything so there are other ways to kind of access that and this is kind of like one of those ways to do it um, then there is the sort of cloud mining, which usually, by the way, is a scam, but this is have to do with actually Filecoin. So uh, this is like another subscription service that we looked into earlier. So basically uh, you pay USDT and then you basically get to mine Filecoin. I'm not a really big fan of the value proposition of Filecoin. It seems extremely expensive to mine and I just don't, like, I wouldn't invest in it, but I don't have a look through this plant here exactly is this better or not. And then there is the global node. I have no idea this is coming soon and it's not even actually working. So let's go into the actual tabs here. So this is the actual interface here, very clear to read. Um, you can hide the small balances if you want. You have the dollar sum here. I can't believe that there's still exchanges today where I don't see the dollar sum of my funds. So it gives me some BTC or something. I want to see it in euros or dollars or any fiat currency to get have a better idea because currencies fluctuate so much on a daily basis. Um, now, um, these can be, uh, and then there's a lot of uh, different uh, deposit accounts. So you have basically a uh, savings account, you have a masternode hosting account, and uh, then you have the trade account. And as I said, 72 different coins, you know, mostly a lot of these essential ones, a lot of DeFi ones as well. But I mean, it's not exactly the most biggest amount of different uh, altcoins out there, but they do have some which are not listed anywhere else. So I guess that's a, a plus for them. But um, a lot of Masternode coins, a lot of privacy coins like Vovnero here, for instance, and Grin. So um, that can be, uh, you know, for privacy users, really great because there is no mandatory KYC on this exchange. So um, you don't have to do KYC. I think the identification, um, you know, the only thing you just like give out initially is where you're from and you just choose a country or I think maybe the IP just detects this or something like that. And that's it. And if you want to have a more, um, you know, freedom on how much you're gonna be trading or withdrawing per day, then you have to do obviously the identity verification. But once again, it is not mandatory. So that's a good op opportunity. Uh, now they give also earn up to 40% of commission on trading fees. Um, and so my code is 5Q5H. And when it comes to the referral program, I have to say it is pretty good because it's paid actually on BTC far as I know. Let's actually confirm this. Yes, it's actually paid on USDT Ethereum. 
and, uh, and BTC apparently, so all of these three. And 40% is pretty competitive. Most exchanges give 25 to 30%. So if you are in the business of finding an exchange that can generate you a lot of referral, 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 referral rewards, um, it's pretty good. So 40%, I think, is a very competitive number, um, at least what I've come to cross. Uh, there's also an application which seems to be available on Android and iOS. And uh, there is languages on uh, Korean, English, Chinese, and Japanese, and Vietnamese, and English. And overall, it's, um, you know, in my Bob Park, it's an okay exchange, kind of for a certain niche of people who are looking for something that doesn't have KYC, right? So in terms of like, you know, when you put it into the bar with a lot of other exchanges that do not require KYC, it's actually pretty good. And they have been two years in the space, which is always like a good sign. You don't really want to join exchanges which have been around less than a year because they still have a lot of reputation to build. And far as I know, Zydex has never been hacked before either. So that's pretty good. Uh, let's see if we can still find the fees on the actual exchange. That is the last thing we're going to be looking. Should have actually done this earlier. So maker taker 0 0.2. It's not the most uh, competitive number out there, but um, for big whales, they don't really care if it's 0 0.2 or 0 0.3. Still cheaper than Uniswap. And basically for withdrawal fees, um, you know, minimum withdrawal for Tether, for, style, for example, is... 50 with a fee of five, kind of big, I'm not gonna lie. Um, and for certain, ex you know, coins like Zilliqa, 100, 100, another one that is kind of huge. But then again, you'll look at something like BAT, well, withdrawal fee of 10 is not really that bad when you compare it to the Ethereum one. So um, it's not necessarily like the best exchange when it comes to like the fees, uh, being completely honest about that, but I think it's like, a when you really, you know, operate under any, you know, exchange that doesn't have KYC, like some people will pay a bit of extra for that privacy that the, you know, exchange is going to be providing you. But that's pretty much my uh, rundown. And actually, I feel this list is slightly outdated here uh, because there seems to be coins which are no longer listed or are inactive. So maybe this fee six months ago updated. So I don't know when, when was the last time. But... Um, that's pretty much my rundown. I'm not going to make this review any longer. Uh, you can find other exchange reviews on my exchange playlist. It has been my uh, goal to eventually like at least, you know, review all the top 100 exchanges and just give people an idea what to actually choose from. And you can leave comments down below what DEX or exchange you would like to be reviewed next on my next video. Thanks for watching. I will see you guys next time on the next video. Cheers.